and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And thank you for tuning in again, I hope. Hi, guys. How's it going out there? Um, Fall is. Fall is here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is funny. I was t- oh, Dan and I took Jenny to the dog park last night, um, and we were talking to this couple, and I'm like, what happened to summer? And she said, yeah. And I said, but the realistic thing is, we always have very warm. I mean, even tomorrow, Wednesday, is supposed to be like in the 80s. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's supposed to be like nice. 85 in Manchester tomorrow. But, um, like, just because it's cool this week doesn't mean this is the, co- the warmest it's going to be. No. Because we'll have warm spells. And we can have... We've in had- fact, I was out hiking yesterday, and I, I put on a light sweater, and I was like, no, I should hold out. <laughs> and then I was like, no, we'll have another yeah. Indian summer. Yeah, we but- will. I also don't need to be cold if no. I'm feeling no, a little chilly. No, I did the same thing. Bones, I was like, I think, I think I need long sleeves if I'm going to the dog park because for some reason it's always chilly at the dog park. I mean, yeah, it's also September. You know? I'm okay with and that. And we've got if a we wonderful... If we can have this for six weeks, I'd be happy. As... I'll be happy. Yeah. Um, actually, I was looking at um, the weather for next Tuesday because next Tuesday is uh, Manchester primary, primary Day. That's Tuesday the 17th. We'll come back to that in a second. Um, and it's going to be, I think, 80 or 82 that day, too. And so, Oh, that's nice. Which is, you know, because I always look and worry that it's going to be, you know, 60 and raining. I in- mean, I sort of do love that I've started to sort of measure things according to such, like, routine calendars. Yes. And there is that sort of, like, I associate pole standing. With cold. With cold for different times. Yeah. But, of course, November it is always it's ch- cold. Well, not always, but, though. Uh, yeah, that's and, true, and too. The, and the first time, uh, the 2000 must have been... 2008 primary, when uh, the first time Ron Paul was in the primary, that primary day was like, it was in February or January, and I swear it was 70 degrees, because I know I only had a sweatshirt on all day. Yeah. And I wasn't cold. Yeah. So, no. who, that was in the And of course, of you know, because Tammy is famous for you through, was that last Tuesday? Oh, is that possible that it was be. only a I week ago? Tammy it, threw a fabulous... Two weeks ago. Labor Day was, was this past oh, one. Oh, okay. That's I'm right. like, wow, was it really... So today, yeah, Labor Day was not yesterday, right? No. No, Labor Day was last week, so it was the week before Labor oh. Day. Thank you. I'm like, okay. wow, is it really? Fa- a few fabulous days? party, though. Yes. Kudos. It was very, a good very party. Nice. I found out we that had I can the easily host. There. there were like yeah. almost all the way to 80, 90 80, people. Yeah, apparently I can host 100 people on my front lawn. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. And I kind of loved how it was, you know, because you could see it on yeah. Barney Street yeah. from the street. And, and we people left our were honking and waving. We have yeah. um, two wrought iron tables that we had put out with umbrellas. Yeah, they're still out there. I'm kind of thinking they're staying there until winter because they're kind of <laughs> fun looking. And then they'll stay. For no, no, no. I'll <laughs> um, the umbrellas definitely will come down. Um, so primary day, we might as well talk about that since it came up. Um, in Manchester, we have nonpartisan elections. So that means um, on the ballot, it will not tell you if the candidate is a Republican, a Democrat, or an undeclared um, candidate. Um, the way the primary works is we, if there are more than two times the number of seats available, mm-hmm. Then there's a primary. Okay. Two times the number of candidates. You know, so if they're the for mayor, there's only one mayor. So two candidates will advance after the primary. For the alderman at large and school committee at large positions where there are two, four candidates will move forward after um, Tuesday. And then for all the other positions, except for the ward stuff, you know, they're, they're, if there's three selectmen, then six people will move forward. Gotcha. Um, and m- it'll be interesting to see what the turnout is. Um because there, there is a mayoral primary, but I don't really think um, Victoria Sullivan or Joyce Craig really are pushing for the are overly concerned that right. they're not going to make it through. Um, on the at large race, there are two Republicans. Uh, there are six candidates. Okay. Two Republicans: Will Infantine and Joe Lavasser. So if you're Republican, Republican leaning, there's your two at-large alderman candidates that you should be casting ballots for. Um, Dan O'Neill, obviously a Democrat. Kath- Katie DeRocher, Democrat. Um, John Hopwood, Democrat. And Kathleen Farley, who I think is Mike Farley's wife. Undeclared, but way on the D side of undeclared. So out of six, there's two Republican-leaning, two Republican types and four Democrat types. So... So if for no other reason <laughs> than you want a nicely balanced thing, you might want to You want to make, you <laughs> might want to help make sure that, that we get two you know, Republicans on the November. Yeah, Will, and, and Will what definitely deserves to be and, there. You know, and Joe's Joe, Joe's Joe and Joe's Joe. <laughs> and um, he, you know, he's an incumbent. I, I don't see why. I Looking at the six of those, 
I would guess, if I had to like just venture a guess, I would assume Kathleen Farley and John Hopp would fall off. Although John Hopp was on local access TV, so maybe, I don't know. I don't think John Hopp would can bump Will of Time, but who knows? Well, it's up to we'll you see. guys. <laughs> um, then the other citywide you know, in all ward race is for school committee at large, which is also two seats. And there are also six candidates running there. Um, Jean Martin, who is a Democrat, Lord, James O'Connell, who if you've ever watched aldermanic meetings, he's the gentleman who just became a U.S. citizen. He's got a very, very strong Irish accent. And trust me, he will spend your money faster than you can earn it. Um, he's a Democrat. <laughs> Laura Quiroga? Democrat. And then on the Republican side, you've got Carlos Gonzalez, Jason Hodgson, and Joe LaChance. Um, again, it really depends on if, if Joyce Craig pushes out a bunch of people, um, we know that at least one Republican will survive, re even if the turnout was all Democrats. Right. Um, I would, you know, that'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see, you know, I don't know if anybody knows who Laura Quiroga is. Carlos Gonzalez has some name recognition. Um, Joe LaChance has some name recognition, especially up in Ward 1, where there tends to be a lot of voters. So those are the citywide. Okay. Um, so every ward that votes, you sh if you're especially if you're a Republican, because that's what I'm going to push for, um, you should come out. Polls are open just like normal, uh, 6 in the morning till 7 at night. Ooh, 7 in the morning, isn't it? 6 in the morning. We're not going out till 7 in the okay. morning. Okay. But they open at 6 and they close at 7. Crazy, right? Really? I really do think in primary years they could, um, there could be a stunted, my in my personal I opinion. I mean, I, I'm just surprised because I've always worked on the 7 to 7 in, yeah. in two races. Well, that's I Goffs, did not And you're know. probably thinking Goffstown, because oh, Goffstown, maybe. I think, is 7 to 7. And okay. some towns have like till 8. It's very confusing. Um, but other than those citywide races, um, there's a Ward 3, um, there's a Ward 3 primary for moderator, which is a ward level per, so I'm going to make a shameless plug for Priscilla Mills if you're Republican and want to push the Republican through, vote for Priscilla Mills in Ward 3. Um, in Ward 5, there is a primary for alderman. Um, really have no way to tell which way this is going to go because one, it's Ward 5. So six people will come out and vote. Um, Tony Sapienza is the incumbent. He's a Democrat. There's Marcus Ponce de Leon, who's undeclared, and Cameron Barr, who's undeclared. So you got two undeclareds vying for that more than likely second um, slot. Uh, isn't Cameron Barr the sushi chef at... Um, at Mint? Mint. Yes, he yeah, is. Think, um, yeah, so yeah, that'd be a good candidate to vote, vote for. Vote for the sushi, the sushi, sushi chef. <laughs> what she said. Uh, Cameron Barr in Ward 5. He works with, um, at, at Mint. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's so a nice good. guy. Yeah, I have nothing, no reason to, you know, it'll be interesting. It's just interesting to see what name recognition. I mean, like I said, I just don't expect the voter turnout to be all that high. Um, in Ward 6, there's a primary for school committee. Um, John DePietro is the Republican. Dan Bergeron is the gotta spend your money Democrat. Um, William Burquist, I don't even know what party he, he belongs to because he doesn't show up on the voter checklist that I have, you know, so either he moved or something. I have no idea. Um, I do know that some of his signs didn't have a but paper. But John right. DePietro. John DePietro. If there, you want to know somebody. He's a smart, yeah. clever, nice guy who will do right by everyone. Yes. Like a genuine, like yes. just wants to solve problems. Yes. Kind of wants day. to do what's right for the kids. Um, wants to do what's right for the taxpayer. You know, looks at the numbers, crunches the numbers, thinks outside the box. He's your man. John DePietro, Ward 6 for school committee. Um, Ward 7 has an alderman primary. Um, Brenda Nuzo, which is undeclared she ran last time. And Ross Terrio, who is the current school committee member there in Ward 7. He's running for alderman. He's a Republican. Um, and then this gentleman, his name's Brian Cole. He's a Republican. I have been working in politics for years. His name shows up on the ballot more times than I can imagine. And I have never met in my life met him. So <laughs> based on that, if you're a Republican, please vote for Ross Terriel because he's actually in the race. You know, it's great that people put their name on the ballot, but if they're never going to campaign, I don't understand why. Um, and I think that might be, oh no, we have Ward 11. Now this is where, this will be interesting. Ward 11 has an alderman uh, primary. You have Russ Ouellette, who is a former alderman, undeclared. Um, Andre Rosa, 
who's run who ran last time he has who's those under cute, the cool signs. He does have different signs. So, so you know like I I love just being like I, you know, can we make politics more interesting yes. or, you know, less boring or whatever, right? So at first I started seeing his signs around Ward 11 yeah. and I was kind of like, what is that? Like yeah. there are these big like yeah, floppy. They, they move like this. Like they're yeah. a little long and weirdly shaped. And then I was like, what is that? And then it was like, it has the rose and the ah. And I was like, you know, so like I figured it yeah. out for myself. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. And then he had, I think there are new ones out. So say some... he, he's getting points for me. Yes, for he's creativity. got creativity. I have to give Andre definitely gets the, the creative um, points. Um, so those two undeclared running against the incumbent Norm Gamash, who is a Democrat. Um, Norm Gamash was the alderman who thought it was perfectly okay to vote for right raises for his family members. Um, which violates the city charter. So if you want to get rid of the gentleman who is okay with violating the city charter, I would suggest voting for one of the other two. Andre Rosa. And uh, <laughs> my, my, oh, my concern, and it, it's not... It's not a huge concern, but my concern, if I was looking at the three of those, um, I tend to try to stay away from the candidates that have colorful pasts and... Um, Russ does have some issues. He, I realize that he's, you know, a reformed alcoholic, and that's great and good for him, and he's got a nice life going now. But he was convicted of, like, holding a woman in his truck or some craziness. Yeah, where oh, I'm like, wow. so, you know, like, if, you're, if it ended up being Russ Ouellette versus Norm Gamache, I mean, that's what the Democrats are going to use. So I get it that people fix their lives, but your past just – still sticks there for a long, long time. But, um, and in that real ward also, there is a selectman primary, which is funny, out of all the wards in the city, we have a selectman primary in Ward 11, where again, three That's and my a, ward, I people! I was gonna say, where mm, seven people will vote. Things will get um, competitive, interesting. I didn't look up all the party, um, the parties, but just looking at the names, um, if I were going in and I'd kind of do a little bullet voting, I would vote for Matt through Ping and Brinks Lottery. Oh. And I would stop there. I would just yes. vote for two. Well, Brink um, Slattery is my neighbor. I know. So Brink I is awesome. That. And I love. And Matt, Matt is um, Ledgeview Properties, which will bring us right into my next story. Right. Um, he, him and his wife um, run Ledgeview Commercial Properties. And, you know, they have some young family, very vibrant. Um, I would. That's just who I would vote for. And that's all there is. So it'll be really interesting. I have a feeling the turnout's going to be really low um, just because... Yeah, it's there's not primary. really any big races, and no. even in the wards, you know, like I know John DePietro, and I, I was actually su not surprised, but oh yeah, there's a primary. I don't feel like any of the primaries are highly contested. Right. So we'll see. We'll see what the um. And so typically, I would assume that city elections primaries fairly low. Well, it depends. I mean, if there was a big, if there was a three, a, a strong three, three way race for the mayor. See, if I was running for mayor, then, it would too, have been then right. we would um, uh, <laughs> be trying a right. little harder. So that's Tuesday. <laughs> even even though it's not a huge important thing, get out and vote. It's good to, you know, it's good to do your civic duty. Um, so did you, the, the Ping article, I assume, is yeah, the one well, from today's say, and now Union we Leader, right? Yeah, Where, so I, was, here's the thing. Before today's Union Leader, um, in a Facebook dis discussion, because apparently I get sucked into those, there was somebody t p asking about property taxes in New Hampshire and are people in New Hampshire doing anything to change it so that they're, we're not paying such high property taxes. And um, the, the problem is, it, it, it's not like you're going to say, okay, no property tax and, and put in an income tax. It, as soon as you add another broad-based tax, it just means you're paying more taxes because you'll still pay the property taxes and then the state will take money elsewhere. And people don't fall for the lie. It's, they will lie to you yes. and tell you, hey, we're going to reduce your, your property, property taxes. taxes by introducing these other taxes. Not. And isn't it That's awesome? That's not going to happen. It will not happen. Well, and, All and, you'll and, do and is just, you'll just pay more and more right. taxes across well, the Well, and if you think about it, here in New Hampshire, because we do think things a little differently here in New Hampshire. Almost all of your property taxes are local taxes. Yes. Very small amount goes to the county. Very small amount goes to the statewide um, education tax. Everything else is what's spent in your community. 
So if you have high property taxes, the, pro the solution isn't to let the state collect an income tax. tax. The solution is to go to your town or city and say, why what are, you are, what are you spending your all my money, money on? So, you know, it sounds simple to say, you know, low taxes are the result of low spending, but low taxes are the result of low spending. So it, giving the state the authority to also tax you via an income tax or a sales tax isn't going to diminish what your community that just means they'll put more in the state budget and you'll pay more you're, you're just going to end up paying more the only sane way to try and keep your costs down is just try and reduce taxes as much as right. possible so and I, to try and privatize so things. prior to reading this union leader article yesterday i had dug in and done some research like okay so how much is it to because i do think it is kind of difficult um for somebody on the lower income level to come to New Hampshire because the rents tend to be a little higher. You know what I mean? I can understand, I'm, I can appreciate that. If you want, if you live in a state where your rent is $700 and you're coming to New Hampshire and you're going to need to pay $1,100 and you only make $25,000 a year, I can appreciate that that might be a little more difficult. But then I without trying to sound cold or non-compassion or anything, I look at the bigger picture of New Hampshire and what is, as a resident, do I want to live in a place where people can afford $1,100 rents and live comfortably and, you know, we have this wonderful quality of life here in New Hampshire, or am I looking to make it so that people who can't afford the cost of living here are coming here. You know, I mean, that sounds really, probably makes me sound awful that I don't care about people at the lower, in the lower economic. No, but I've, I've been is, there. But, but, but what people need to understand too is, you know, when I, when I rant about big government yeah. and all those things, it's because the cost of living and why are apartments so expensive is because of government right. intervention. Right. It's because we have all these regulations and things that are introduced that end up being tagged on yep. to that price line. So I think in the article that we're both talking yep. about, it was this lady, she is currently living in a Manchester apartment. Very inexpensive. $685 dollars a month. See, she's been paying those. $685 a month. She's lived there for 10 years. Okay, ding, ding, ding. When you know you're living in a place at $685 and everybody around you is paying 1000 or more, at what point did the did you think, wow, I should probably be thinking about what I'm going to do because someday this bubble's going to break? So here's an interesting, totally aside, non-relevant, well, it's relevant, but not really related story, right? So in, in Man Manhattan, in New York City, right, yeah. they... Um, they have rent control yes. apartments, right? So you will find examples like this where someone has a really yeah. nice apartment in downtown Manhattan and they're paying a ridiculously yeah. low rent, right? Yep. The flip side of that is that there is this huge black market yeah. in Manhattan for what is called like a rent. Sublet uh, like, or whatever. Like, yes. Yeah, so, well, both sublets and it's called a key fee. So you will pay up to between like fifteen thousand and two hundred thousand dollars for a fee for a key fee where like you are subletting then from this other person so you have the locked in price right but i've got to pay the person who used you to live there used 20 to grand. live there yeah in order to transfer it so why do i bring that up i bring it up because every time you get too much government intervention people find ways around it <laughs> you, you create a market for either black market things mm -hmm. so, so the more illegal you make things or the harder you make things the more you're creating opportunities for people to have loopholes yep. or to try and backdoor it or to like figure something out you know to be creative which i applaud right <laughs> so this poor lady is like now she's like but you know if i have to move to another apartment it's going to cost me twelve hundred dollars also she has two sons I was gonna who say, aren't really this working. was this was my thing i read it this morning and i was like what and i actually had a bat like well, let me go back up so she's 61 years old. I mean, that does stink to try to have, I can't imagine being 61 years old and one still renting in New Hampshire, not in New York or Connecticut, so, you know. Um, but she's, she's been, she makes $18 an hour. So she's, she's making about $37,000 a year. And considering that the median income 
in New Hampshire, the average income in New Hampshire is 43,000. So she's not really that far off from what the average person in New Hampshire makes. Um, she has two grown sons. This is where I, my pity went, eh. They're both in their 20s. So you have three adults, like it or not, three adults living in a $685 a month apartment, which means it's about 225 bucks a piece mm -hmm. a month. And three adults, at a $1,200 a month is only $400 a month a piece, not even $125 a week. Why is this a problem for these people? So one son only works part-time at Walmart and the other one can't seem to find a job. And I'm thinking, oh, come on, dude. There are, there is, there are three trillion jobs in New Hampshire. Well, well, there are. And really, I mean, it is amazing that the... The amount of unemployment rate right. is ridiculous. Like, if you want to work, you can in find New a Hampshire, job. You can find a job. And they, yeah. But you know, I did read that, and it did occur to me. I was like, oh, I wonder what the backstory is, right? right? Because you know, we talk a lot about uh, the criminalization yeah. of, of private behavior, yes. nonviolent well, behavior. Well, I wondered like this too. Like, and why are like, these two sons still hmm. living? Because she did make the comment that she didn't want to kick them out oh. because she didn't want them living on the street and begging. And I thought, well, that's a that's a leap. Right. When I, I moved out of my parents' house, I don't think it crossed my mother's mind that I would be living on the street and begging. But I also think, you know, people's actions do have, you have to take responsibility for your own life. So this all came up in today's show because Ledgeview Properties is managing the property that she's leaving. They don't own it. They manage it. And it, the, somebody bought it which, you know, that's what happens. And now they are, that's their business and they're renovating and they're expecting that this apartment would be about $1,100 a month. So I'm thinking, so why aren't you just finding some place to live while they man renovate it and moving back in? Because $1,100 a month for three adults, $1,100 a month, $1,100 a month for just mom is not outside of the realm of possible. Now, Ledgeview does say they want, they recommend that, um, the rents do not exceed 37% of their income. Um, and I didn't do the math on the $18 an hour to see if she would even fall. Um, and I know they do all sorts of background checks and criminal checks and credit checks and all these things. So that's where I started thinking about the kids. And I'm like, so can mom not get, she says she doesn't have good credit and I can appreciate that. I understand how that happens. But if I, I would have to believe that if she's making decent income and even if she didn't have great credit, she could still find a place. Unless there's more to that story. And, you know. and so another part of the article uh, that I found interesting is they were talking about how property developers are mostly creating more like high, high end. High end. Because there's a market stuff. for it. And so, I mean, let's talk about that a little bit, you know, because people are always, yes, I understand, you know, we want affordable housing. We want to create a climate where, but the thing is also, you know, uh, th you have to look at supply and demand right. and you have to look at the law of economics. Yep. Like you can't actually look at all of these things through the lens of but that but doesn't this, seem well, fair you know, what's or really that you know but the point is if there are people who are willing to pay more mm -hmm. then it means someone like this lady unfortunately probably has to move to a more affordable area, area. she might well and, right I mean, I mean, that's just, that's you just, know, well, that's, I, I went digging because, you know, you know where I, I want to live? I want to live on the water. I want to live in Rye on the ocean. Yeah, exactly. So we should <laughs> so build maybe some, someone make we need that to build for me a $200,000, <laughs> you know, beach house. <laughs> um, but I did, I went down a rabbit hole on rents because I'm like, okay, it's, because that's really where this whole thing started is the conversation is that's why rents are so high in New Hampshire because we only have a property tax. And I'm like, well, that doesn't. Me and another person were saying that doesn't make any sense. Our overall tax burden is, is, still is like lower. 46th out of 50. Mm. So if you only look at one number, yeah, that that looks like something. But you have to look at all the numbers. You can't just look at one thing and say that's because. Because you could say, well, New Hampshire, it costs more to live in New Hampshire. because Look at the heating prices versus Florida. I oh, mean, yeah, but look at the air conditioning prices versus New Hampshire. But also, yes, we got to finish, uh, fi oh, fix our energy. I don't. Just, so the <laughs> national here. average yep. for a median, and median is one of those words I hate yeah. because it actually means Half there's just as many above half. as there is below. It's not average. But the median one-bedroom rental price it, nationally is $961. Okay. Two bedrooms, 1191 So I thought, okay, okay, it's higher than I thought nationally. New Hampshire, um, one bedroom, 1,039. 
two bedroom, 1326. So 8% higher on a one bedroom, 11% higher. Now, if you look at New England though, Vermont is, is above. They're at, they're slightly above the national average. Oh, they are? Yeah. Huh. Maine is below, I which I that. believe that because Maine's very, very rural. So right. I'm assuming and if you go up into Acadia, you know, you're not seeing high rental prices. Um, Rhode Island is slightly above on one bedroom and slightly below on um, two bedrooms. Um, but, and Connecticut's higher than New Hampshire. Connecticut, yeah. Right? I would assume that would be the case. And Massachusetts is way higher. higher. Massachusetts yeah. is almost 38% and, higher. And let's talk about that a little bit. I mean, that is also driving the price of rentals in at the southern part of New Hampshire yep. is that, you know, Boston is kind of booming. Yeah. And so we are pushing sort of and treating the southern part of our state like yep. the excerpts of Boston. And I'm like, look, if we're going to be sending them our workers who are paying income tax right. in Massachusetts. At least they could do is have better prices. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but interesting enough, out of all of these, take out Mass, which I think Mass is um, stymied by us. I think their their income or their sales tax is pushed down because they are right yes. next to us. But Vermont, Maine... Maine is the third highest overall tax. Vermont is the fourth highest overall tax. Oh, Rhode second. Island Rhode Island is the sixth highest okay. overall tax. Connecticut is the eighth highest overall tax. New Hampshire is 46th. Oh, okay, you overall. mean it. So overall I'm just saying tax all of these right. all of New mm. England is way up here in high yep. high taxes. New Hampshire is way down here in overall taxes. And if you look at our median incomes, they're not Right. They're not out of line with everybody else. Our, Massachusetts is the outlier. But you like the Connecticut. Let's take Connecticut near New York City. Their average income is $47,382. Ours is 43000 So yep. they're a little higher, but New York City. Their median house price, 243 Our median house price, 278 So... Okay, there's a little bit difference there, but okay, Connecticut's kind of depressing. I couldn't pay me to live in Connecticut. But my whole point is that well, and their tax burden is super right. high now. So, you know, you know. So the thing is, when you read these articles, is don't always just assume, oh, it's everything's evil, up. greedy yeah. landlord. And, you know, it's like not. there's a lot more to the story. And, and if you're looking at these things holistically, a big chunk of the story that no one ever wants to talk about is how is the government making this particular thing worse. more expensive and worse? Okay, so that's that. <laughs> um, Glendy is this weekend. You should get out there and enjoy some Greek food. Um, do it for me because I can't eat any of that stuff. <laughs> and don't forget to vote next Tuesday, 17th. Polls are open 6 in the morning till 7 at night. And maybe Carla and I will do a Facebook Live next week when we're doing our show. Ooh, we'll see. We will because we're going to take coffee around. That's right. We'll be driving around visiting all the polls. That's all we got for this week. We'll see you next week. Enjoy the good weather. Bye. Bye.